Stuart Little is one of the most important films from my childhood. It was the first film I ever saw in the cinema all the way through, having previously walked out of Lady and the Tramp. And I became very quickly obsessed with it. I had a Stuart Little lunchbox, I had the little teddy of Stuart Little, I had the little book. Absolutely loved it. And I don't know why I've never talked about it on the 10 years that I've had this channel, but I figured today is as good as time as any. So I'm not going to give any spoilers about how the film concludes. I'm going to assume though that most people have seen this film. It was released in 1999. And it's directed by Rob Minkoff. And I've only just realised that the screenplay was by M. Night Shyamalan, one of my favourite directors. So that's pretty amazing. It's based on the book by E.B. White and has an absolutely fantastic cast, which we'll go into in a moment. But the plot is quite bizarre, but it works really well. And all I remember, and something I say a lot, is when... George runs down the stairs and he goes, it's today, it's today, it's today. And remember, I want a little brother, not a big brother. So his parents go off to the adoption agency and go to bring home a child and they choose Stuart Little, who is a mouse. Now, I don't know if I assumed that that was how it worked, that you can just walk into a children's home and pick a child and take them home. It's not how it works. But for the film, it's really nice. And Stuart comes home and, of course, George is like what on earth is that? He's not a brother, he's a mouse. Such a quotable film, there's a lot of it I remember. And it's all about Stuart being different and how he doesn't fit in, even though his family makes the best of efforts to make him fit in. But obviously he is different and he feels like an outsider. And then we have Snowbell, who is the cat who wants to get rid of the mouse, which makes perfect sense. And Stuart comes up against some trying times where he not only feels excluded, but he feels like the cats are pushing, pushing him out, which of course they are. And I love that because obviously the story of feeling different is not unique. We see it in films constantly because it's an issue that plagues a lot of us, at least once in our life. But the fact that Stuart is a mouse works really well. He is adorable. He is the littlest member of the Little family, and it allows for some fantastic scenes. Some of my favourites, you know, the boat race, um, when he's trying on the G.I. Joe clothing, when he's down in the basement with the model village, or model railway, I believe. They are fantastic. I love seeing Stuart in all of these different costumes, and I actually am very surprised they didn't exploit those for merchandising opportunities. Yes, there was quite a lot of Stuart Little merchandise, but I can't remember seeing like one of him in each of the G.I. Joe costumes that he chose. I think it was G.I. Joe rather than Action Man. Forgive me if I misremember that. I'm surprised they didn't kind of go into that level of merchandising detail, at least not in the UK. But for me, it is one of the most memorable films. The narrative development is brilliant. We have some great character development. And... It's adorable. It has some amazing scenes, some fantastic visual imagery. I just think Stuart, the design of Stuart, is perfect. He's adorable. He is so cute. I could, I, I could give you every synonym for cute, and that, that would apply to Stuart. And he could not be more perfect. Monty is one of my favourite film cats ever. A couple of years later, we actually adopted a cat from a cat home who looked like Monty and was called Monty. So I think his owners, his previous owners, may have been Stuart Little fans. It's a fantastic film, and for me it's perfect. Looking at it as an adult, is it perfect? I don't know. I am too biased. I am too far involved with this film from my childhood. It is part of who my... It, you know, it's part of my makeup as an adult now because I watch this film so much. So I can't really judge if it's a good film. As a, you know, from a more grown-up perspective, certainly it's not very realistic, but if you can suspend disbelief long enough to get past the fact that this mouse is a talking mouse and was in a children's foster home, then it's absolutely beautiful. I haven't read the novel. I really want to read the novel. I should make the effort. The cast was lost on me as a child. I, I didn't know who any of these people were, but the cast is... Obvious. I mean, even the voice cast, absolutely sensational. 
So, Stuart Little, voiced by Michael J. Fox. Who is that? When I was younger, I didn't care. But obviously now as an adult, I really appreciate that. And I think... I, I, I can't see Michael J. Fox as the voice of Stuart because, to me, Stuart Little is a real talking mouse. And he has been for 21... 21 years. That's, um... That's quite scary. But, you know, the voice is brilliant. Gina Davis who I love, I absolutely adore her as Mrs. Little and the fantastic Hugh Laurie as Mr. Little and fun fact, until I discovered the world of Fry and Laurie I just always thought Hugh Laurie was American and Jonathan Libnicki of course plays George who gives a fantastic performance, he's ridiculously adorable in this, almost as adorable as Stuart and uh, I just think his performance is so lovely to watch and he was a great little child actor. Snowbells voiced by Nathan Lane, Smokey by Chaz Palminteri. I apologise if I pronounced that wrong. I've only just realised Steve Zahn voiced Monty. And I can see that completely working. Lots of other names in this that I recognise from other films that I've seen and honestly the cast is amazing absolutely love it this was my first look at Hugh Laurie as well which makes it kind of special but for me Stuart Little is one of the best films from my childhood one of my f certainly one of my top five non-Disney childhood favorite films if we take Disney out of the equation I love it it won it got an Oscar nomination which I'm actually a little surprised at because I didn't really think it was a critically acclaimed film it was nominated for the best visual effects. Yeah, all right, no, that makes absolutely perfect sense. And I'm just going to very quickly see if I can see who won best visual effects for that year, just to see what it was up against. Because as I said, I mean, as I said, Stuart. <laughs> um, yeah, no, it didn't stand a chance. Stuart Little was up against The Phantom Menace and The Matrix for best visual effects. Obviously, The Matrix won that one. The Matrix won quite a lot. Um, what else did it win? It won the top box office film for the ASCAP Award. And it won some International Monitor Awards. And the Golden Satellite Award for Best Visual Effects. Yep, definitely. Young Artist Award. I assume that went to Lip Nicky. And the Young Star Award, which again, I think that definitely did go to Lip Nicky. It's perfect. Stuart Little, for me, is one of the loves of my life because it's always been with me and I can always rely on it and I will always cry at it. If you are not my generation and you were born after 1999, I'd really love to hear what you think of it. If you didn't see it in the cinema but if you saw it years later once the hype had died down, did you like it? Was your first introduction to it that Stuart Little TV series? I hope not because that was not good. Let me know what you think of Stuart Little, but for me, it's always going to be one of the most beautiful films I've ever seen.